just in time for Halloween, barely anyway, we're going to be doing one more Halloween costume. And this one is going to be a pizza costume. And to start off, we need to make some measurements on our figure. And I'm measuring Spider-Man here from about his chest to about a similar area on his back. Looks like four and a half centimeters. And what that is, it is going to be the crust of the pizza costume. And you could do the same for other types of figures as well, such as this Calico Critters little critter. Looks like he might be three and a half centimeters. And for more unusual shaped toys, let's say this flamingo, we want to measure about from maybe wing to wing, so two centimeters there. And then for the opposite side of the crust, we want to measure from shoulder to shoulder and then leave about a half a centimeter of space on either side. So that looks like about five and a half centimeters on Spider-Man. And on our calico critter, it looks about like five centimeters. And for the littlest pet shop, this one we're going to measure a little differently. Let's see how tall his chest is. Let's go with one and a half centimeters on him. And now that I have the measurements, I'm just going to go ahead and start making the pattern for the pizza crust. Next, I cut out the pattern. I'll take some tan colored felt and I'm just going to kind of mark along the edges here. So that way I know where to cut. I cut out the felt. Next, I need to make room for the head to slide through here. So I mark the central point and I'm just going to cut out a circle. And since Spider-Man's head pops off his neck, I don't need to make this circle very big. I can just make it about that size, which is about a centimeter wide. On this one, I've folded the felt in half, and I'm going to start off by just making a circle, like before. And this time, I'm also going to make a snip here at the back at the central point. So that way it will fit around the critter's neck and we won't have to worry about squeezing it over his head. And it looks like I need to make my circle a little bit bigger still to make it fit. And now that one fits much better. Now obviously for other sized creatures like the Littlest Pet Shop, we're not going to be putting the pizza around the Littlest Pet Shop's neck. Well, I guess you could if you wanted to, but it's easier if you make the slice this way, lengthwise. So in that case, you just need to cut out a rectangle of tan felt for the pizza crust and not, don't have to worry about cutting a hole in it. To make the cheese covered portion of the pizza, I need to do a little bit more measuring. So I'm going to measure from, let's say the top of Spider-Man's shoulders, about halfway between his feet and his knees. So it looks like that would be 11 centimeters. And you could do the same with other creatures, such as this calico critter, which would be four centimeters. Now the one you have to do the measuring differently on is the littlest pet shop. So we want to hold the measuring tape so it sticks out a little bit past the tail feathers. And, and let's go ahead and say three and a half centimeters on this one. Next we need to make the pattern. And what we're going to use is the width of the crust, which is what we used to make this piece right here. We're going to do, use that same measurement for the cheese of the pizza. So for Spider-Man that was about five and a half centimeters. So I'm going to mark that. And then I'm also going to mark the center point, which would be about 2.75 centimeters. We don't have to be exact, but that'll give us an idea. And we're going to make a triangle. With Spider-Man, we measured from his shoulders down to about halfway between his knees, and his feet was about 11 centimeters. So I'm going to mark that. So I have my central line, and now I'm just going to connect the corners. And then the corners are, of course, the width of this. So we're going to connect that to make the pizza slice. And we're going to cut out this pattern. And this time I'm going to trace around this on yellow felt and cut out two yellow triangles. So here's the pieces we have so far. We have our two yellow triangles, we have our tan pizza crust, and they're going to fit together like that. But what's missing? Maybe some toppings for the pizza. Let's go ahead and make a pepperoni pizza. I found this felt called Cran Apple at Hobby Lobby, and it seems like it's the perfect shade for pepperoni. So I'm going to cut out six circles from this. And to make the circles, I start off by just cutting out a square, and then I round off the corners. 
now that we have everything cut out comes the fun part. We get to assemble this. So to assemble the pizza crust, I'm just going to put a thin line of hot glue along the edge of it. Like so. And then I'm going to quickly line up the cheese. And stick that underneath it. And I'm going to flip it around and repeat with the other side. And as for the pepperonis, you can arrange them any way you like. I'm just going to scatter mine around though and glue them into place. Then give the glue a few minutes to cool and once it's dry, you can put it on your finger. Now for the littlest pet shop, I found it's easiest if you have the pizza sit across the figure like this instead of around its neck. And to keep it closed, I just glued in two small magnets and they hook onto each other. And the pizza slot costume stays on the figure like that. Now for the calico critters or anything with a huge head that you can't remove, you can glue one side of the triangle normally, but I recommend for the back part where the slit is, you only glue on one half of the flaps. So I'm going to glue that side on. And that way you could still put the costume on over the character's head. Like so. And while I'm sharing the dimensions for my pizza patterns, I have some viewer photos to share from individuals who gave some of my previous projects a try. First up is the Dark Knight from Twitter, who made the Invisible Woman effect. Then, from the Philippines, comes these pictures of the firewall effect by Jasper John Depositario, and he made his own iron fist effects, too. Then MPG made some arrows and his own quiver design. Deadpool is Jaden from Instagram created the whirlwind effect. Spider Criminal from Instagram made Hawkeye some new arrows. Also modifying the techniques from my firewall video is Nozumo's key blast effects. Thanks for sharing your photos. And I think everything looks great. If you decide to try any of my projects, I'd love to be able to share your photos too. Just give me a link to them in the comments down below or send them to me on social media. Just remember to say that I have your permission to share them. That's it for now, but if you haven't had enough crafting fun, check out my crafting playlist for even more projects. And if you'd like to stay updated for new content, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.